You're listening to Sports Radio Detroit. Welcome to Grave Discussions. I am your host, Barnabas. And I am your co-host, Samael. Welcome to episode 53. His name was Jason. Jason was my son. And today is his birthday. You let him drown. (laughs) You never paid any attention. It's like it wasn't her. Anyways, hi. (laughs) Hello. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, this episode is going to be pretty much all about Friday the 13th and Jason Voorhees. We decided that we're going to cover one of these films in uh, the cult corner today yes in honor of somebody and uh we just thought we'd talk about the whole thing why not yeah because we haven't had like a nice little jason discussion we've mentioned him here and there like mm-hmm. in regards to like slashers and 80s films but you know now let, let's talk about the j-man himself exactly we're gonna do that in our main segment today but first we do have to give a quick shout out to sports radio detroit our hosts one really cool thing that's coming up with SRD is that they're doing a uh, best female like personality, like radio Ooh. personality or something in Metro Detroit. And uh, it's like an annual thing. So you can go vote for your favorite personalities by uh, district. And uh, you can do so on sportsradiodetroit.com. Sam, tell them about their other social media. You can find them on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you just type in Sports Radio Detroit or SRD, They'll pop up, and let me make the distinction that I do every week, not Detroit Sports Radio. Exactly. I'm going to vote for you for favorite female personality. (laughs) Thank you. Because you're just so heartwarming. (laughs) I'm going to vote for (laughs) Mukbim. He's sitting in the room with us. He's a a very good friend. (laughs) Very handsome young boy. First of all, we do have to uh, talk about what's going on in the world of horror, as always. So the first thing is uh, bringing it back, Bruce Campbell. One of my favorite horror icons. I, I got nervous because I thought he was really done after Ash vs. Evil mm-hmm. Dead with anything horror. Well, he's not. In fact, he's coming back to an animated zombie series on Netflix called The Last Kids on Earth. And uh, there's no information on like who he's going to be yeah, he's just, voicing. Uh, but... Yeah, he's going to be voicing someone. Apparently, it's like some, there's some zombies and these kids play in the treehouse and they eat a lot of candy. Yeah. And, you know, zombies. So let's throw that in there. Yeah, essentially, but it's post-apocalyptic, and it's going to be for kids, which is an interesting mixture, but yeah, I love Bruce Campbell, so I'm excited. Let the kids learn to be hopeless at a young age. They will learn what life is very early. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, it's a good uh, philosophy, I think, but yeah, The Last Kids on Earth, guys, is going to be coming out later this year once we have a more concrete date. We'll let you know. So, dude, alien, right? (laughs) There's going to be six of them. Six. Six shorts. Shorts alien films yeah so they're probably going to be about like an uh, basically probably like the same amount as like a like a regular tv show like here's a 45 yeah. minute thing they one of them that reminded me of like the thing premise the one mm-hmm. person is in what it seems to be i think it was either on the second or third story i know what you're talking about yeah i think it was like uh that wasn't the contamination one it was i don't know something that was like the that. later on one yeah that was either four or five I mean, here's the thing. Is it going to just be in the same world as Alien, or are we going to see the Xenomorph? Because it didn't specify, like, you know, the type of alien we're going to see. Spoiler alert. There are some trailers for this, and we do kind of see the Xenomorph, like, in the very last frame. So I hope that's not how it is in the actual thing. Like, we kind of see the Xenomorph, you know? I don't know. But here's the thing. Since they're short films, they're probably only going to be, like, 30 minutes or less. Oh. So it's going to be interesting to see Alien in this format. Because we've really only kind of ever had like some comics and mainly the films. Is it gonna be know, some so. Hulu shit? <laughs> <laughs> like like that. Do- I don't know. Like that. Do- What's it called? Uh, that one series, Into the Dark. Oh yeah, the one we talked about. No, for the I, Eyes so of March. This is probably gonna be like ten to thirty minute so, short films. So I know it's a different director and writer for each one, mm-hmm. and they're unknown they all, too. Do, so like the later ones, do they like? 
kind of fall together at the end or like did they all just make one already or is it like this guy makes one he reads his script mm -hmm. and after he reads his script he makes the sequel and then another guy reads that script and makes the sequel to that like i really have no i want to know if it's like a like consistent continuation of a story like but it, just different directors. i think no i think each person like wrote their own script oh and that's it and they just submitted them and they picked like the six best ones because there was like 500 entries or something like that damn if you knew about that you could have got in on that. <laughs> i know yeah i didn't i didn't know about it. yeah 550 pitches from filmmakers so it's pretty crazy i'm super pumped about these because they actually look really well produced and hopefully well directed and suspenseful these are independent yeah okay pretty much yeah it was uh between 20th century fox and this i guess company called tangle i think it was like a competition because this year is going to be the 40th anniversary of Alien, so it's oh, kind shit. of kind of special. Yeah. And I've only seen it once and recently. You got to watch Aliens, but uh, yeah, that's happening, guys. Again, we don't really have info on release date, but we'll let you know. The next article is uh, about a new violent western from uh, the writer of Bone Tomahawk, and Park Chan Wook is going to be directing. Now, this is pretty cool because. If you have seen Bone Tomahawk, you know it's kind of, yeah, like a dramatic western, but at the same time, it's really brutal and like terrifying because there's some crazy shit that happens. I've been hearing about so, like Bone Tomahawk, and is it, mm -hmm. would you consider it like a splatter flick or? Uh, kind of, because it is like really violent. Is, is it, it's more like a drama though, right? I mean, technically, yeah. So, like some like Bay of Blood type shit, except like, you know, Western, because Bay of Blood, I don't know if you've watched I that. I haven't seen it, no. So it's basically a splatter slash body count movie, but like the main story isn't scary. It's not about an urban legend oh, okay. of a, like a killer or something. It's just like regular people doing fucked up shit because of money. Oh, okay. Like, so kind of like Hitchcockian almost? Yeah, it's Hitch it's Hitchcock. It's like Giallo type, I guess. In well, like, it, it is a Giallo. Yeah, cause, in like theme, I guess. Or something. It, I think Bava made that one, so... Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be around like the same type because like horror elements, sure, with the gore. Mm -hmm. I guess if you want to call that a horror element. I've seen action movies like Terminator 2, I guess, then would count as a horror movie, you know, mm -hmm. with all that fucking carnage. I mean, oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think splatter films and body count and blood and guts are fucking horror? Like, do, I think do, so, do, yeah. Because yeah. if I saw that shit, dude, psh, I would be pretty scared, you know, so... I mean, I guess that, I mean, that could still belong to, like, drama films. Because, yeah. like, anything dramatic tends to lead to, it, like, it, it has a place in horror, though. Because even when you look at something like Hostel, like, I think we can universally call it horror. Hostel? Yeah. You know? So, I think I think this kind of falls in, but is also pretty unique. But anyway, this new movie is called The Brigands of Rattle Creek. And, yeah, I'm pumped for it. Because uh, Park Chan-wook is great. He did Old Boy and Thirst, which is a really underrated vampire movie actually i don't think i've seen either old boy is awesome and it's really fucked up at the end <laughs> so i know that this guy is crazy enough to do something like good with this you know okay fuck it yeah so i don't know, give it a shot you might uh, enjoy it park chan wook okay yes okay. yes uh so anyway let's move on to some trailers this week's trailers are actually really exciting i think all of them First up, Stranger Things Season 3, releasing July 4th on Netflix. So for the trailer, it looked kind of confusing, I want to say. Because mm. it was just like uh, that one kid that looks like me when I had long hair. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dustin or whatever the fuck his name uh -huh. is. Like the surprise party and then he's just talking. and then That was funny though. Then like uh, her, her hair grows back mm -hmm. or whatever the hell. And people are just having like really dramatic conversations. And then all of a sudden it's like, haha, monster. They're just kind of keeping us in the dark, so yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm glad they didn't give shit away because after seeing the Halloween fucking, I'm gonna mention this every <laughs> fucking week until someone does something about this and that never happens again. <laughs> just like the Halloween trailer that showed, I, I'm fucking ripping this movie apart even yeah. though it was all right, but they showed too much in the trailer, and you know what? This didn't do that, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you, Stranger Things, for <laughs> fucking yeah. confusing my ass yeah i'm i'm excited to see it because of that i have no idea what's going on obviously it's meant to be i think like a year or so after season two so everybody's like kind of more of a regular looking teenager now you know yeah. but yeah some crazy shit's going down still 
and i think the demogorgon is involved again i have no idea yeah it, it was a monster and he <laughs> yeah. was like brah so yeah. that's that's all that really happened <laughs> yep. in that trailer yeah so uh, i know this is a, a big one for all of you guys pretty much i am pumped about it july 4th netflix watch it yes. next up another netflix show guess which one guess which one? sabrina Yes, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, more specifically, coming April 5th to Netflix and the technically season one part two <laughs> trailer just came out and uh, it looks really good too, actually. It shows the Sabrina with like a darker side and yeah, I'm into it. And you see her making out with her ex-boyfriend and with Nick Scratch and I'm just like, whore! Like, <laughs> like, turn, uh, like turning I mean, into a witch automatically makes you like a piece of shit person really like i, I don't know yeah i'm i'm scat I'm, I'm interested to see how she navigates all these relationships and also is like snapping people's necks and shit so yeah i don't know i don't know it seems it seems uh pretty insane so i'm excited i want to see what happens because i still haven't watched the christmas special but i watched the part oh, yeah. one of the first fucking season and you know it's all right. It's all right. It's, yeah. uh, it's good. And it's that's very good. And the, the Christmas know. one was pretty all right too. So I don't know. I might just stay away from that one. I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> no, it's non-canon. I'm it is kind of important to some of the characters though. So I don't know. But uh, anyway, let's move on to the last one here, the Headhunter. So this is actually surprisingly something I've been thinking about. Com- you know, completely randomly for like the last week or so is like a horror movie. Yeah, basically set in like medieval times or I don't know, in some ancient times or fantasy land or some shit like that, you know. <laughs> that doesn't involve dragons. It may or may not involve dragons, but who am I to say, you know? This one is basically that, and it follows this like Viking warrior guy who is all by himself for some reason. Yeah. And he's got like this crazy ass cool like suit of armor and he's got all these weapons and it seems to be that the premise is he's hunting this monster who I think killed like his daughter or something. Yeah, like that. I think he like took her or something. Yeah, so it looks really dope. It looks super like bleak and depressing kind of. And uh, but looks, like lonely as hell. He's like yeah. the only guy like in the movie. I think that's super interesting though because it just is going to make us immediately relate to him and probably cheer him on. And uh, the monsters looked cool. I thought hopefully it's not too much like CGI, but it looked cool and uh, it looks pretty like violent and gory and stuff too. So I'm I'm pumped for this one. It's coming out April 5th this year. So nice, relatively yeah. soon. This is one I was most excited about out out all three of them. So yeah, same honestly, because it just looks really well made. You know, like the lighting and everything. So I'm I'm psyched. Uh, I don't have any info on whether it's coming out in theaters or just on VOD or what, but it'll probably be on VOD, <laughs> so you can rent it. But yeah, that's it. And then, uh, of course, we would be remiss not to mention the passing of John Carl Buchler this week. I believe it was Monday that he passed away. Either Sunday or Monday, I'm not too sure. Yeah, but uh, he did die. If you're not sure who that is, He's a legendary makeup and effects artist who did work on stuff like Reanimator, Hatchet, Ghoulies, Terror Vision, basically like all those awesome 80s movies. He was like the head makeup, like a practical effects guy for all that. So Terror Vision was nice. <laughs> yeah, it was. So, man, RIP to him. He died of cancer. Fuck cancer. He was 66. He also directed uh, a bunch of stuff, including what we're going to be talking about in this week's Cult Corner. So, Samuel, we've been waiting for this. We're going to be talking about the John Carl Buchler directed Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. Um, not going to lie. I didn't really get to watch this too much as like a kid, you know? Mm-hmm. So this wasn't one of my favorite like Jason movies. and uh, But I watched it uh, for the first time on Blu-ray. I would say like a month and a half ago. Really? Oh. And uh, before that, I I watched it on like a DVD, but I never had the VHS. You know, it was was the one one of the ones I own, and I used to call this one Carrie versus Jason. <laughs> yeah, it's basically what it is. It's an accurate description, and it, it's pretty cool though because this is probably the most. I mean, I guess unless you want to count Jason Goes to Hell, <laughs> but but this one is like the most supernatural. I would say of oh, the yeah. Jason movies. 
just because you not only have undead Jason, but then you have this like, uh, I don't know what was she like a telepathic, telekinetic, yeah, <laughs> whatever the fuck I don't know, tele something, <laughs> but she could like control stuff with her mind and. I don't know. That was just like a, when I first saw that, that was a huge surprise for me. Especially in like a slasher movie. Yeah. Because for some reason, I mean, Jason coming back to life and like being a deadite basically was not like that weird. Because you're like, okay, he's the he's the main big bad. Yeah. So they're going to do something to bring him back after basically killing him in part four. And this is the first movie with Kane Hodder too. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, this movie is a landmark. I think a lot of people really underrate it but that there's like a lot of people who do appreciate this movie and i mean i'm one of them i think this is actually probably one of my favorite friday the 13th it, films yeah it's not up there for me because like i just haven't watched it as many times to like feel that way yeah. like i said i was like a part three four or six mm-hmm. eight <laughs> seven i kind of like they didn't have it at the video store mm-hmm. but uh the thing that i liked about it too was like her doctor trying to use her to yeah. like so he could like learn how to like how she like gets those like psychic abilities and he she was like a guinea pig to him basically and you saw what a big piece of shit he was when he tried to sack when he well when he did sacrifice tina's mom to jason he like pushed her in front of him and launched her at jason essentially and yeah he was just an asshole yeah yeah no i he, uh, but that was one of the coolest dynamics of the film too because it was definitely an unexpected kind of element but of course with somebody like her there's always going to be somebody who's going to want to like take advantage of it, you know? Oh yeah. Use it for their own personal gain. So that was actually kind of like a theme in this movie. There were, there were actually some pretty like, so I would say sophisticated <laughs> themes in this movie. Kind of, it was just in a slasher movie shell, you know? So it was yeah. kind of weird. It was like, Oh, okay, this is all happening. He's basically using her and then boom, Jason, you know? But, yeah. That's, that was kind of, yeah. It was basically purely coincidence that her like old house was this like psych place or whatever the fuck and jason was there you know yeah it's because like her grief and guilt about her dad made her resurrect jason thinking like she was gonna resurrect her dad which spoiler alert she did at the end yeah but with all of that that like happened and when you think about like part six and then part eight this movie could almost just be non-canon or like not even exist and the main storyline of like jason Voorhees wouldn't really change all that much yeah he just you know wouldn't have like wetter clothes i don't know more decomposed flesh or something like you know story wise it doesn't really matter all that much like part four it mattered part five it mattered because we know that jason is like well known enough to have like a copycat killer yeah and then he comes back and he's like oh my god it's actually jason yeah. Voorhees. is not roy you know yeah whatever. so what if it was roy though like imagine in part six if that was roy because think, think about it. here's, here's my theory okay jason never jason always ran up till part four mm-hmm. in part five roy he was the first jason that only walked and after that, when he was resurre- when Jason was resurrected, Jason only walked. That lets me think like they resurrected yeah. Roy. <laughs> Dang. I mean, I I've always imagined <laughs> Deadite Roy. I've always imagined that you know part six Jason is walking because he was a zombie. You know, and so zombies I've, don't I've, run. Yeah, I guess they were in the I mean, George A. Romero <laughs> universe. I I guess so. But then when you think about like them being in the Evil Dead universe, I mean they're not zombies. Yeah. You know, but I don't know. That's an interesting theory. I'm not sure. Now you're thinking about it. Holds it up, but dude, if they've just been fucking with us this whole time, I'm gonna be so mad. And then, but and like, then, also really impressed. Right? You know? Like they're like the real Jason. And then once they <laughs> resurrect him as a dead eye, he like sprints and shit. Like, yeah. It's like, aha, it was Roy this whole time. So Roy fought Freddy. Yeah, Roy beat the shit out of Freddy. Like, I just want to see a version where he like comes back from hell, but he's got like even more powerful shit or something. Like he could shoot fireballs out of his eyes or something like that you know <laughs> that was, that's, that's what i want to see like, i think that would kind of be shark jumping yeah, which jason I was comes back from hell <laughs> <laughs> no i don't want to see that we already saw that it was freddy versus jason ah, that wasn't the same thing though he didn't even start that fire by himself yeah <laughs> you know you just see him lift his mask and he's just like shooting plasma beams out of his mouth you know, all right uh, so more about part seven what <laughs> yeah, do you think about seven. kane hotter Oh, of, his, I love, first, his first performance yeah. as Jason. I, I love Kane Hodder as Jason. Like that's the main Jason that I know and love. 
you know like when i first was watching a lot of the movies yeah you know because i i really kind of watched i think i watched the first movie and then i kind of watched some of the later stuff yeah so i was like oh okay he's always been zombie monster jason but no that's not the case i did it the star wars way i watched Mm -hmm. the later episodes like later movies first and then i watched the earlier ones yeah i first watched jason takes manhattan i think no i watched jason goes to hell when i was Mm. like five Mm. and then i watched jason takes manhattan when i was older then i watched friday the 13th part three then i watched part five then i watched part four Mm. and then six i think because i couldn't find it yeah then i finally watched seven yeah and then the original was like the very last one i watched yeah i mean i mean which you don't have to well you kind of want to watch it first but you don't have to you know what i mean but no but kane hotter i loved he's uh just got such an intimidating like presence and he's got those like hulking shoulders and everything you know he looks really like scary as jason i think yeah he he was one of the more scary jasons and Mm -hmm. I like the effects they did for him when he was unmasked in part seven too. That was probably the best unmasking. Mm-hmm. I, I think in one behind the scenes thing I saw, I read that um, I think one of the like actresses or whoever was given an interview and she said that like Kane Hodder was actually like really scary yeah. <laughs> to work with while she was like, you know, acting with him and stuff. Yeah. So I believe that completely because Kane Hodder now kind of seems like like a really nice guy when he talks to people at conventions and stuff like that. But I bet when he got into the Jason character, he was like, yeah, he was just like stuck in it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. He's, it would have been so cool to work with, you know, with that though. But my favorite Jason, though, I mean, I mean, thank you to Kane Hodder for mm-hmm. like being iconic. But like C.J. Graham, bro. Yeah. Part six, Jason was probably my favorite. Yeah. I mean, he, he was like a Hulk. Jason he, for sure. he was like Batman Jason. He had like the fucking throwing knives, and that's yeah. what I called him always, Batman Jason. Because yeah. he went from like part three and four, he was just this like hillbilly, and then yeah. boom, all of a sudden, like he was just like a professional hitman, like in part six and above. Yeah, I don't know. It was really interesting to see him. He start using all the weapons and shit. But I mean, I guess from the beginning, he was like you know pitchforking people to death and. <laughs> stuff like that and using an axe and stuff so and spears yeah you know so yeah he's he always wasn't been, as, as brutal or oh, i think yeah. he just wasn't as strong probably and part seven kind of like that fucking horn kill that was just too much for me oh man yeah but part seven jason was honestly one of the cooler ones he I was feel the like. scariest i think yeah i mean even though he like kane hotter played him in mm. eight and then jason goes to hell and then jason x like i think part seven like did it for me <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you could just tell too. I and mean, when he got unmasked, and you know, Tina like strung him up and everything. Like he was, he was pretty scary. The practical effects obviously were amazing. Did he? Did the director do the effects for this movie himself? I'm, I'm pretty sure he did some work himself, or like his company did stuff. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100 percent positive, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. That's dope. Yeah. I mean. I think that's one of the main reasons I like this movie too. You know, it's part six or this movie, I would say probably have some of the best like practical effects. So I would say part six. Yeah. But I I think this movie comes pretty close. You know, the, the kills are pretty gory. Some of the kills aren't like totally inspired, you know, like the, the sleeping bag kill. I think the sleeping bag kill was like cut kind of though. Yeah. I, uh, I saw a lot and it's just being released on YouTube now. And apparently Mm -hmm. they're going to release a lot more. There's a lot of like uncut footage of like part seven, like that they just never used for like some like extreme, extreme, like l- extremely longer and more like yeah. brutal kills. And it's on YouTube right now. Yeah, they had to because of, you know, r- the ratings and everything, which fucking suck. But I did, I think, I want to say, I heard about like that sleeping bag kill where he like hits her repeatedly yeah. into the tree. And that was like way more brutal, but they had to cut it. And I've never seen it, I don't think. In the game, uh, think. he does the three wax against the tree. And then in Jason X, he like smashes yeah, them multiple times. One, yeah. Which was cool. It was like a throwback. But Why was that considered like too much? I don't know. Because but, cause then it was like the 2000s. So it didn't really matter as much. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. The ratings were a little looser. Oh, yeah, That's why you get shit like shit. Antichrist coming out now. Yeah, that was know. fucking, that was too much for me. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of more independent, so the rules probably aren't as strict. But, I mean, when you think about it, Jason kind of was for a long time, too, you know. So, 
but by by part seven it was it was considerably larger budget you know they had a lot of stuff to play with a lot of the scenes by like the water like on the lake were pretty cool um didn't the didn't, didn't the house like explode or something at the end yeah it did because of, of that fire that tina started with her beep, 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 yeah. her mausoleum powers i call them <laughs> At least it didn't make that same sound effect because that shit was infuriating. To me. <laughs> oh, it man. was so bad. It was like, ding, 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 ding. oh my god! I was like, oh my god! Hey, bro, it was like 1980s. He's really shooting like Flash Gordon lasers yeah, <laughs> at this really dude. Was. You know? Oh man! And not the new Flash Gordon either. Like <laughs> no. the fucking the old one. Flash. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that shit. I was not a fan. I, I honestly, I love that movie, but I, I don't want those sound effects in a horror movie. You know what I mean? that's just my stance on it but, yeah uh yeah dude how do you feel about the character of tina and then like her and nick surviving at the end uh i think nick should have fucking died because like he just <laughs> got like at one point he just got thrown to the side and then he just kept going after tina like jason should know by part eight now like mm-hmm. the final girl rules are in effect like yeah there's always one chick who's like virginal or I don't know though, because he's been dealing with Tommy Jarvis this entire time. So yeah, part four, not part five, but then part six. Yeah, which is weird too that he just throw Nick over to the side and like kill everybody else that he got to. Yeah, but then he's just like, I'm just gonna save you for later. <laughs> yeah, like, that's not. I don't think that that makes a lot of sense. And but. then like she she like broke the stairs and he ended up in the basement. Yeah, after she hit him with a light bulb. <laughs> whatever the hell it's not weird for this movie to have like all these illogical things happening but uh when you really think about it we need to we need a cinema like, sense man, for this movie for real but i mean this was still like the 80s oh yeah um, it didn't have to make sense yeah not really it as just, long as there was like a bunch of blood and we get to see jason yeah that's all people gave a shit about so this but this movie did have some pretty cool kills but they weren't like amazing nah you know, I would say some of them were like pretty gory, but like they, they were all like kind of like they ended abruptly. Like it was yeah. just like relatively quick. We didn't see any like part six had like the skull crushing and all that shit. Thinking this part had more of that. This would have fit this Jason more. Yeah, I think so too. Because he was basically like a skeleton man. Yeah. At this point, you know, and he was fucking crazy powerful. And then somehow oh. in part eight, his skeleton like appearance is like not there anymore, and he's yeah. wearing different clothes, like, and his chains are gone. Like, well, That's we see weird. him drop the chains at the beginning of part eight, but yeah. still, like, why keep them on for that long? I have no idea. I guess he just couldn't be bothered to <laughs> let them go. He's like, must kill. <laughs> I have no idea, but it is weird that part eight Jason kind of went back to like being normal, and then the mask was the like scene. restored to. Yeah. With the same axe mark, yeah. even though it hadn't been broken on the left side still. Because it was clearly a follow-up to part seven, too. So why were they just like, hey, let's just make a completely different Jason yeah. and nobody will notice. Like, everybody noticed. Wasn't half his mask? Didn't his mask snap in half? Yeah. yeah. But he finds a new hockey mask that someone else also got hit in the, with an axe on the right, side. Right. And then when Jason goes to hell, it was like stuck to his face and yeah. it was like silver. And then in Jason X, it wasn't silver anymore. It was a regular hockey mask. And then the, it was like mm. stuck to his face by his skin. It was like. That, yeah, that's the thing. Continuity <laughs> errors. That's what I love about Friday the 13th. Unless you have like all the same director or you release stuff like a year apart or something. There's just going to be so many inconsistencies. Because for, for one, like there's probably actors that you can't use. You know, every, so everybody's going to have a different build. Or maybe there's just like elements you can't use due to copyright or something like that. I have no idea, but yeah, his character evolution was like so weird. Let's because, talk about that. Yeah, from the beginning. From the so, beginning. part one, we have Mrs. Voorhees, mm-hmm. and Jason's a wee lad in the lake. I, I'm assuming that uh, he did not pull Alice into the lake at the end, and that was her hallucination. Yeah, because one year later, <laughs> and we're at Alice's house, and Jason is a grown ass man. Right. So he wouldn't go from 14, like, they're 12 years old, to, like, 25. And like, What if he just took, like, a bunch of roids? I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> think about it. I think he just lived in, like, the wilderness. He never mm-hmm. died. And he just hunted, like, animals. That's why he's so fucking strong. Yeah. Just ripping apart, like, deer. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. 
So in like in part two comes around, he has his bag over his head. He has some fucking <laughs> suspenders, and yeah. he he's a redneck slasher. It's basically the hills have eyes and some leather face, mm-hmm. and like. And then you know he gets whacked um, in the shoulder with a machete. Then in part three, mm-hmm. what was his name? Harold. She he steals Harold's fucking clothes from his clothesline. Yeah. Uh, kills Shelly, takes his hockey mask. So Jason kind of changed looks like severely in this one, especially the like the unmasking. Like mm-hmm. his in the in part two, he had like big ass like lump on the side of his head. He had hair coming out. And He's part, basically a mutant. And in part three, he looks more like a demon. Like he has like mm-hmm. he, he looks like he's like fucking mutated and shit. But like he has like weirdly shaped. I don't know. His face looked like evil. I don't know how to explain. Mm-hmm. He just he just didn't look like a regular fucking hillbilly. Yeah. And then uh. He's about. He was like a good six three in part two. Mm-hmm. He was like the guy who played him, Richard Brooker. I know he was a bodybuilder, so he was fucking big. And then a uh, part four, we got a taller Jason, and then like he was a little bit more lanky. Yeah. And he had long fingernails for some reason, even though he had only been in that barn for like what, like a few days, and his fingernails grew like this. I think he's just a freak. I think so. Yeah, it's a freak of nature. And uh, he he had. I don't know, he looked kind of different. In part three, he kind of jogged after people. Same thing with part two. Mm-hmm. Uh, part four, when he was going after Tommy's sister, he was like kind of fucking hauling ass, like sprinting as fast as yeah. he could and to the point where she like couldn't get away. So she had to like jump out of a window from like a balcony. Yeah. And uh, his head was like differently shaped than in the previous movie. The mask had the X mark and the damage. And then in part five, we get the part four Jason in mm-hmm. the flashbacks, but it's not like a flashback of Ted White. It's a flashback yeah. of like Tom Morgan, the guy who played masked Roy. Because mm-hmm. the guy who played Roy didn't play imposter Jason Yeah, in the movie. It was imposter Jason was Tom Morgan. That, and uh, he was the biggest Jason out of like... Tom Morgan must have been like ugly or something if they were just like, yeah, we can't use this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And they made him the Jason in the flashbacks and the act- and Roy in the mm-hmm. movie, like I said, masked. And then, well, part five, I need to add to, he walked. Yeah. That's how you kind of know it wasn't Jason. First of all, he was wearing a pair of like, he, he was wearing a boiler suit, you know, <laughs> yeah. like coveralls. Jason doesn't wear coveralls. That's Michael. So you could tell it wasn't Jason right mm-hmm. off the bat. He was like way too, he was like six one, skinny dude. Like, I mean, he survived getting hit by a fucking bulldozer mm-hmm. and he got stabbed in like the nutsack by Tommy and then he got his hand chopped and then he fell on some spikes, but you know, he was dead as fuck obviously. But I think using that whole Jason MO was like pretty smart because like then people would have assumed Jason is back and then Roy could just like move on and with his Mm. son's death. But I don't know why they made that episode all about like fucking Roy, even though Tommy was in it, Tommy still defeated. Yeah. Uh, foe Jason. (laughs) If I remember correctly, wasn't Tommy like a different actor? Yeah, it was. was So weird. (laughs) Yeah. So it was weird seeing him like he was older in part five than he was in part six. That's what it seemed like. He seemed like a grown ass man in part five. Yeah. (laughs) And then in part six, all of a sudden like, he's like, Hey, my hair's curly. And I talk like this. Yeah. He's a like Canadian as fuck in part six. It was pretty Sheriff, weird. you gotta listen to me. Like, it was yeah, it was super weird. I, I don't know. I didn't like any of the characters in part five that much, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, it was it was interesting seeing Roy. But that's what I was saying before. Is like, by this point, Jason has already kind of had this like huge legend around him oh, that yeah. you know there's like a copycat. But I'm sure that people didn't really like the copycat thing so much, or the fact that they were setting Tommy up to be Jason. Then they, For some reason, it was then all of a sudden, shit. part six just turned directions. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, dying will probably make you walk slower again. Yeah, you know, but unless it's Roy. Yeah, but yeah, dude, one fucking bolt of lightning, and out comes the Jason that I feel like a lot of people our age kind of know as Jason. Like, yeah, you know? the the slow zombified, mm-hmm. slow walking, strong as fuck, can't die exactly that's the one that everyone thinks about and that's the one everyone dresses up for as halloween no yeah. one's dressing up as like part three jason i mean they are but they but like they it's it's kane hotter like mm-hmm. actually i think cj graham he he should get the credit for the really yeah stocky intimidating jason i would say he probably had the most iconic look to him yeah you know that is more or less but uh kane hotter was like the he's like the slow walking jason mm-hmm. you know like because Part six, CJ Graham was hauling ass after that nerd in the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. forest. But yeah, no, Kane Hodder was definitely more intimidating and just meant to be up in your face and terrifying. Like he doesn't even move, yeah. but he's scary. <laughs> you know, that, he's that's basically Kane Hodder. Yeah, 
Plus, he gave Jason like a whole new personality. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I guess part seven, eight, nine, and ten, Jason were they? They all you could tell it's the same guy because <laughs> like the the heavy chest moving when he's breathing and mm -hmm. like the like he just seems angry as fuck instead of like just a regular old deadite. I was gonna bring it up too. You mentioned personality. I was gonna kind of ask you how you felt his personality changed more so because for me, I kind of feel like for the first you know four movies or whatever, he was really like oh, I gotta kill for mommy. You yeah. know, I gotta kill all these fucking sinners, all these kids. You know, that are doing dirty in my woods. You yeah, know, whatever. So, you know? yeah. And then you know, part six rolls around. And from that point on, I feel like he this hasn't really, like, like, yeah, he hasn't really been like that. He's just been like, he's so tired of people. He's just yeah. killing people just because they're in his way, you yeah. know, basically. I mean, it's, when you die all the time, you're bound to be bored. Yeah. It's like, what else is there to do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to go kill some counselors. Yeah. But there is still that attachment to Mrs. Voorhees. Although I don't really think she's mentioned like a whole ton in like the yeah. later films until freddy much? versus jason yeah then we see he's still obsessed with his mom because we have to get the origin in that movie but essentially yeah jason x though i like seeing uber jason oh it was cool it was definitely cool you know jason x is technically like the last film in that universe mm -hmm. because apparently it takes place after freddy versus jason oh yeah so technically J i mean jason won right i mean yeah technically because <laughs> it's crazy so it's like one through eight and then first Jason goes to hell, then Freddy versus Jason, and then Jason X. Mm -hmm. It's pretty weird. I, <laughs> so why don't why didn't they ever make a continuation when Jason crash landed on Earth two? Yeah, I don't know. I was gonna say like with that logic, you know, just every did a subsequent remake. Jason, yeah, every subsequent Jason, at least from that like chronology, would have to be set in like you know i don't even remember which year it was but you know 2855 or whatever you know on like earth 7 or something i don't know but it would basically have to be that because they could just retcon it i guess and go back to present time but that would be weird yeah I don't or know. they could just continue like the <laughs> yeah the 2009 which would reboot. be weird because like jason keeps prisoners and he has a whole pulley system yeah. underneath the camp that's a completely different jason yeah basically which is why at he's least like, I don't group like, it in with all the other movies as much. No, but he's like a part three and six, like mashed together. Kind of, yeah. Because yeah. he's like, he's brutal, but like he fucking sprints. <laughs> yeah, that Jason reminded me a lot more of like the Hills Have Eyes. Yeah. Like that kind of killer kind of, you know, except it's just Jason and not like a family of cannibals or whatever. I think he would fuck up the Hills Have Eyes people. Probably. Cause they're like mutants and he's like supernatural i mean yeah yeah if, if you're talking about like part six and after then yeah i mean that's why he would fuck up like leatherface and stuff you know oh yeah i mean yeah i don't know maybe hulk i think hulk can take jason no problem oh yeah <laughs> that's neither here nor there <laughs> but uh yeah it, it, it's interesting to think about a continuation of that i don't know if they could even do it because it would only make sense if it was set in like the future and then jason's running around shooting laser beams at people you know or we could see like what happened right before jason x you mm -hmm. remember because at the beginning he was captured yeah yeah so that'd that, be that, cool. and that takes place after freddy versus jason because he gets resurrected to, to earth by freddy mm -hmm. and then he kills freddy and then he yeah. goes back to crystal lake yeah if they continued off of freddy versus jason and just kind of skipped you know jason x i think that would probably be ideal Jason yeah. X could be like a what if, like, <laughs> just like an alternate universe kind of thing. Or just or make something. it non-canon. Yeah, exactly. But I will say that yeah, I don't really consider Jason X too much when I think about the whole thing, just because it's so different from the rest of the franchise. Bro, anything, and Jason is just like a mindless killer. Bro, Jason X was the Dracula three thousand of slasher movies. <laughs> yeah, basically. You remember Dracula three thousand? Yeah, I, I liked it, but I don't. I was fucking young. It's That's a guilty why. pleasure for sure, but. I mean, I wouldn't call it, like, a good, quote-unquote, you know, <laughs> horror movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, what, what else do you want to say for for Jason Voorhees and Friday the 13th? I, I, I think his evolution has been definitely probably one of the more unique ones. Did you see Tom Savini's Jason? The, oh, is that the... The, uh, the game one. The game one, yeah. One that was the pretty pitchfork cool. and the fire, I thought that was sick. Yeah. I think that would be pretty sweet to see in a movie but it would involve too much cgi most likely I'd, 
It's good in a video game, though. Yeah. But the last we've seen of Jason was the video game, unfortunately. And mm-hmm. it's because of that whole lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, Sean I don't know Cunningham, how, Victor I don't, Miller. I don't know how settled it is now. Because I'm pretty sure it was, like, settled. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, there was some update, but I I don't remember what exactly happened. I I think they're still working stuff out, though. I hope I don't have to wait till I'm in my 30s. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> that would suck. It'd be like the Duke Nukem of fucking yeah films, like waiting. I don't even remember how many years. Duke Nukem, Jesus, <laughs> I remember that on Nintendo 64. <laughs> but then the last game came out, and everybody was like, "Oh my god, Duke Nukem!" Because it was like 13 years since the last one, or something yeah. like that. Something crazy. And yeah, I definitely don't want to wait that long between Jason films, but I mean, if I must, you know, we'll, we'll just create a new slasher. Yeah, there you go. In the meantime, there's all the fan films, which is cool. I haven't seen any of them. Have you watched Those Never Hike Alone? Of course. No, I still haven't. I heard Never Hike Alone is like gonna be like canon. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Is it supposed never, to take place? Making a new one too. Huh? When's it supposed to take place though? I'm guessing after Freddy vs. Jason. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I gotta watch it. It's free on YouTube, right? Yeah. You okay. know, when you think about it, another movie could take place anytime before Jason Goes to Hell, too. Because, mm-hmm. like, what was he doing between part eight and Jason Goes to Hell? I mean, theoretically, they could scrap anything they wanted. You know, we saw that with, not to bring it up again, but Halloween. Oh, yeah. You know, if, if they wanted to, to they up. could. <laughs> I don't care <laughs> we, if you bring it up. We do, we do. I would. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know you would. I had to do it. You know, because it makes sense. Like, that movie basically retconned everything except for part one right yeah so theoretically they could do the same thing with jason Voorhees and friday the 13th but i don't know i i like the character progression as he like is still like a hulking deadite thing you know so personally that's what i would want to see i think but i'm not really sure where his character could go from that point you know like what more are we going to see are we going to see it turn into some more crazy shit like jason goes to hell where like demons and the devil get involved or something you know like i don't i don't really know a little too much (laughs) exactly i don't know what else they could do to like keep it interesting you know because he's always going to go back to crystal lake that's why they put him in space they were like all right maybe we shouldn't you know go back to camp crystal lake so much i think they should or at least have him like go to other parts of fucking new jersey besides camp crystal lake right yeah this is exactly why they took him to manhattan too which, I mean, I don't know if Jason Manhattan Jason goes to is. Jersey Shore. <laughs> hey, I'm walking oh, over here. Like, Dude, he at, just fucking, at this point, he like, kills Snooky. the way some movies are, I wouldn't even be surprised. You know what I saw the other day, not to go off topic? I just want to say this, because okay. I've been enraged about it. You, you know all those shark movies we've been talking about, right? Yeah. I found one that was called Trailer Park Shark. Oh, God. And I just couldn't believe it. I just had Have to... You- Bro, they had Shark Exorcist, and you're fucking... <laughs> House you, Shark. You're surprised about that shit. <laughs> yeah, bringing it back to Jason, I am glad that it never got quite that goofy, even though there were some goofy parts, you like know? Jason versus Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> oh like, God. he's just <laughs> fighting the Messiah. Like, did, did you ever want Jason to, like, really speak? Oh, man. I kind of would wonder what he would say, but he'd probably just be like... <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, yeah. I'd give him a pen and a paper. I'd be like, can you, like, write something down? Yeah. I want to know, like, at least what the fuck he's thinking. <laughs> like, he's probably going to write mom. Like, <laughs> you might go, it's yeah. Like, I mean, when you think about it, though, if he did grow up in the way that you theorized, he's not going to know any language or really much of anything. That's why he's so socially impossible to interact with. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he just he won't understand you. But oh, he right. but he understands kind of his his mom. You know, so. I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, when we really think about it, his character is just the evolution of a kid who lost his mother and then like grew up in like probably the wilderness, yeah, and just kills campers. That's his life. So it's kind of it's kind of sad not to vigilante Batman style. <laughs> yeah, essentially. So all right, uh, I think that's pretty much all I had to say about Jason. I mean, it is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Yeah, me too. Probably my favorite horror villain or character of all time personally same um so it's it's absolutely legendary and i really hope that we see more jason priest soon and uh r.i.p john carl buchler so let's move on now to our very last segment of the week it is the chopping block 
So in this week's Shopping Block Samuel, we've got a brand new movie that we just watched. It's available for rental, I believe, The Clove Hitch Killer. Yes, yes. You can find this on Amazon Prime mm-hmm. and Xfinity and AT&T U-verse, et cetera, et cetera. Nice. So this movie is it actually, I think, based on real events, and it concerns this small town. Do you remember which state it was in? I can't remember. Oh, I have no fucking idea. Uh, that was my first and only time watching it. <laughs> I, I want to say it was like Kentucky or Alabama or like one of no, those southern it states. Wasn't. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. Are you sure? Okay, I don't know. But anyway. Why? Because the dad was about <laughs> Jesus all so much? Well, the whole town kind of was. <laughs> so yeah. I think it, but I think it was. Anyway. Might have been the Bible Belt, but you know. Yeah, possibly. It stars Dylan McDermott as, yeah, this, you know, Jesus loving, kind of hardworking leader of the community, dad. You know, and he's got a teenage boy and uh, a younger girl, I think, his kids. And they seem like this wholesome family. And in kind of summer of 84 style, yep. there's this like serial killer going around. And the kid starts thinking that it's someone close to him. Dun, 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 the yeah. dad, you know. <laughs> so a little bit different from summer of 84 in that respect. But, but essentially the same thing. It's a yeah. murder mystery. Mm-hmm. It was cool to see that interaction though, because if you know, if I found out some like shady shit that my dad was doing or like liked or something, I don't know. It would be pretty scary to imagine that he'd be like a serial killer. Yeah, you know, I I don't know if I would even say anything because he'd probably kill you. <laughs> exactly. So the way that this movie utilized like their interaction together throughout the entire movie was super cool because you weren't sure if the dad was the killer the whole time but seeing like him and the son talking and just kind of this weird tension and everything it was weird you you could tell like it didn't feel like a like a normal people conversation every time his dad would talk to him about anything right it would feel like some sort of manipulation i don't know how to explain it It just (laughs) felt like that yeah like he was saying stuff like maybe he knew that his son might, you know, might be suspicious of him about something. And, and we thought that there was a lot of red herrings in their dialogue and with other characters. So yeah, it, it kept you guessing, honestly, which was pretty cool. I'm not going to spoil it, but I knew what was going on kind of like the whole time. And I mm-hmm. think we both called that shit. We're like, nah, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, and then, you know, our police were later confirmed with, the rest of the movie mm-hmm. which got crazy real fucking quick uh it did but it was still quite of a slow burn it was a slow burn you know yeah. so ex- expect that if you trying to, watch this they're movie. trying to see if you can like mm. they're, they're just trying to like drive you crazy with like suspense the whole time you're like yo just give me some clues and mm-hmm. it rarely gives any like it's it's it, it seems like a really just <laughs> I, I don't know i was like really confused like yeah. When they kept throwing it every which way, like of the possibilities. Mm. And then, then you had like the useless in- interactions, like, uh, like with the kid fighting at his like Jesus camp or yeah. whatever the hell they were. They're making macaroni art for the Lord. And then <laughs> they got into a scrap out because someone said something about yeah some dudes like chick or whatever. It was weird. I guess it was kind of cool because they didn't like completely force this whole storyline on you. They still attempted to make it seem like, hey, this is real life, but there's a serial killer angle, kind of Zodiac style almost, I want to say. So it was pretty cool. It was basically kind of like a slice of life thing, but it just has like a really dark drama, sort of. You I know? think so. And then, yeah, as the story basically progresses, stuff gets not only kind of more and more obvious, not completely obvious, but, you know, you pick up things and you're like, okay, you know, that's oh, yeah. how that's how we were basically. And um but you know, it, it doesn't make it too easy to suspect anything or anyone. It kinda does, but it makes you think it doesn't. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. So it's smartly written. Um, I think all the performances are really awesome. Seeing Dylan McDermott as this character is weird as shit, but it works. <laughs> Honestly, he does a great job. Yeah, I I I'll give it to him. Like he I still mm-hmm. liked uh Still like the summer of 84 killer like a little bit more yeah and as a movie in general i think it was like it has way more rewatch value mm-hmm. it's about like kids and their shenanigans and we all thought one of our neighbors was a killer at one point or we, there was a haunted house on the block that you would all you'd go out at like five o'clock you know yeah. you'd go like 
just watch it or whatever the fuck <laughs> you would do. You know, kids are weird, man. Yeah, no, it's that's like, true. It's, it's like the burbs, but just a little bit more serious. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And that movie got surprisingly serious very quick, but this movie was serious throughout the whole thing. Oh, yeah, no, it was not a comedy at yeah, any no. point. It, it, it's pretty bleak. I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's like super depressing or sad, but I don't know. It, it, the way that it's portrayed is kind of so realistic that you sort of feel down almost, yeah. you know, based on like what's happening. So if that's the movie that you kind of are in the mood for, I think that this is a good movie that to do that. So um, I will say this movie is not chopped for me. I did enjoy it. It was definitely a little slow at times. Um, but it wasn't like too inconsistent or anything. And it kept me engaged. So I don't know. That's, that's why I liked it. Yeah, for me, it's not chopped. I, I, like, I blindly bought it not knowing if I'd like it or not. And I'm not disappointed. I enjoyed the mood of the movie. Like you said, it had that like real life feel. So the whole movie itself was just, I don't want to say like, <laughs> I don't want to say the movie was dull, but we're like the setting was so dull that like something, yeah. something weird had to have been going on. It's just one of those like quiet ass towns where just some shit goes down. Mm -hmm. And for once, you know, it's not really about a bunch of crazy stuff happens in the suburbs, like, like the burbs or Sermo 84 or anything yeah. like that. So decent mystery. I just wish they would have like tossed us a few clues and ran us through a little bit more loops you know because mm -hmm. like it was just one or two loops that we got thrown through and then we were just like i pretty much have it figured out right now i think we maybe needed just more of like a red herring i think so you know i think that would have made it a little bit more interesting but yeah also i was gonna say before there was not really a lot of score to this movie either which can definitely drive the film you know, but yeah, there wasn't a whole ton of music, but yeah, the music, there was no memorable music. There was a yeah. cinematography was just basic, like <laughs> post 2000 cinematography. What yeah. can I say? I mean, there was nothing special. There was no like long shots of like the wilderness mm -hmm. or like drone shots or any of that. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like medium shots and mystery. Let's keep it simple. Like <laughs> Essentially. I mean, yeah, but it, so it was fairly it was simple, effective. but it was, it was an effective movie. Yeah. I think that's going to wrap it up for episode 53, guys. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And be sure to stay tuned next week where we discuss us on Grave Discussions. <laughs>